Okay, okay. Um, today we're going to take a look at something that I call a uh, electromagnetic mass. Uh, let's start with Einstein's uh, energy uh, mass equivalent uh, uh, equation. Uh, energy is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. Um, one of the points that's missed out of this uh, this uh, equation is the fact that uh, is the electromagnetic aspect of mass uh, becoming uh, energy and that mass is basically uh, only electromagnetic in uh, in in uh, composition um, a way to see that even better um, which uh, I think is very rare to see out there is to realize that um, uh, the speed of light squared is uh, equal to 1 over mu naught epsilon naught. This is a magnetic uh, constant, and this is an electric constant. Uh, mu naught is equal to 4 pi uh, times 10 to the minus 7 uh, Webers um, per uh, amp uh, meter. And um, uh, epsilon naught is equal to 8.85 uh, times um, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 uh, Coulomb squared Newton me, uh, divided by Newton meter squared at uh, Newton um, I'm sorry uh, Newton's not Newton squared and then meters squared right there um, I'll just give you I'm just giving you those two constants you probably already know those constants um, you could look them up on Google um, anyways so uh, the speed of light squared uh, is equal to uh, one divided by these two uh, uh, constants right here. This is a magnetic uh, susceptibility, and uh, this is the electric uh, uh, constant. Uh, we use uh, normally in electrodynamics and electrostatics. Um, so if uh, the speed of light is equal to one over these two constants, the speed of light squared is equal to one over, the, one over these two constants, we can take this and plug it uh, right in there for C squared, and we get that energy is equal to mass uh, divided by these two constants right here. And the difference between this equation and this equation, they're both uh, equivalent, um, but in this equation, we see that not only th th we can actually see the composition of mass um, acted upon by these constant operators, uh, a magnetic one and an electric one, which means that mass has both a magnetic and electric compositions. It's, it's difficult to see that in this form of the equation, which again, you can try out this equation and try out this equation, put one kilogram here, put the speed of light squared and get the energy out here in joules and put one kilogram in here. And uh, if you don't trust me about these two, which sometimes I, I've made, I have made some numerical errors, but hopefully I haven't, but you can look up these two constants on, on Google and div take the one kilogram divided by these two constants. You'll get the exact same energy you get with this equation. So therefore this equation is equal to this equation, but this equation allows us to see the actual magnetic and, uh, and electric components of, of, uh, these, uh, of how mass, uh, converts into energy. It gives us a little bit more of the story uh, than this does right here. This is a more compact form, and this gives us a little bit more of the story. It's a less compact, but it gives us more of the story. Okay, um, we have the electric uh, uh, energy density uh, in joules per meter cubed of an electric field is equal to this. And if we solve for the constant, this is the same epsilon naught that's this, that is here. Uh, if we solve for, do a little bit of algebra, the epsilon naught is equal to, uh, uh, this right here. Um, the next thing we have is the magnetic, uh, energy density. Uh, the magnetic energy density is equal to the magnetic field squared divided by two mu naught, and mu naught is this. Uh, this is the electric energy density field is one half uh, epsilon naught, that's this constant, times the electric field uh, squared. And so we can solve for mu naught right here. We'll do a little bit of algebra. We get this. And the reason we do that is because if we take this equation and we have epsilon naught and we have uh, mu naught, we could take this and plug it right into here. We could take this and plug it right into there. And we will get this equation. It's a little bit messy. So I've decided to um, uh, clean it up just a little bit um, and actually do a little bit of uh, uh, algebra. I've solved for the mass here. 
So it's the energy, the total energy of the particle, um, the uh, magnetic field squared, the electric field squared, the electric density, energy, I'm sorry, the electric energy density, and the uh, magnetic energy density. So this is, this, this tells even a more story than this does of how these magnetic and electric fields, um, and the energy density fields, um, uh, 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 operate on energy to create mass. So the more complex and less compact our formulas become, the uh, the more story, the the the, the, the more uh, explicit story it tells of the transition of how energy becomes mass. Um, here I've done the opposite and solved for the energy, and of course it just flips these uh, here, and these the, we can see these 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 terms. Um, operate on energy to give us to convert energy into mass. Uh, the reciprocals will uh, convert uh, mass uh, into uh, energy. Okay, and then here I've just uh, labeled here we had energy is equal to uh, uh, these two operated on mass to convert it into energy. And if we solve for mass here, I have its uh, sister equation over here where I do a little bit of algebra, a mass is equal to, and you can scoot that up, uh, mu naught times the energy. So in other words, what we're trying to say is that... Um, is that uh, these two constants operate on energy uh, to to convert energy into mass? So, math, uh, physics equations uh, actually tell a story of an experiment of how to tra uh, to transform a one quantity into another quantity. And so, when things are in compact form, we sometimes lose uh, these stories uh, there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, lecture, and I look forward to any comments at the bottom. Thank you very much.